Okay, um, this is the group meeting for April 13th, 2023, not 2013. <laughs> I'm a decade behind. And, um, yeah, uh, Go ahead and start with uh, the announcements. Yeah. yeah, no, it is, it is that. Uh, it's that we finally have a desk.dev API. Um, so I'm, I was pretty happy to see this launch because this was like one of the first things that I heard as feedback from the community that like, it's a really cool UI, but like, can you just give me an API? Mm -hmm. um, and I passed along comments from this group, from Dwayne, from folks that I spoke with and they did it. So that always makes me happy when clearly they listened um, and offer that up to the community. So um, I'm excited to see how people use it and see where, see how helpful it is. And if, hopefully it means that there are others that are going through and trying to aggregate this information on their own because they don't need to anymore. It's already there. Yeah. Um, so like I, I actually went through it and this is part of the note that I posted in the risk channel in, in Slack and um, yeah, I was pretty, pretty pumped. I can say like it, um, one of the things it does is it shows the CVEs for packages and it create, there's a clear navigation from the package manager to the GitHub repository or other repository, which hasn't really existed anywhere in a clean and easy to use way before. So like, and it runs OS, OpenSSF scorecard um as well like i was pretty excited to see that like if you hit like um this you you can see like this is the scorecard data for react which is awesome um i don't know how often it's run but like that's <laughs> one thing auger does right now is we run scorecard now we could just call this api instead um i also like its uh, enumeration of the dependencies in a project um, and the versions. That's also very, we also, Augur also manually scans for that now and doesn't need to anymore. Um, and you can get really detailed information on specific package versions, um, whether it's the default. And I think it was, was it this one or this one. I guess my only question to you, Sean, in terms of using this API versus what you've already built in Augur is I do know that this data set is limited to a specific set of package managers. So yeah. if you, if yours is more flexible and that it would encompass things beyond that fixed set of information, because I think that that would be the only concern I would have. And that um, because this is available, it's great to have something, but it's still not technically everything. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's impossible to actually have everything because everything is growing and there's probably some mathematical equation that talks about how much we can aggregate and in constantly growing set of information. I don't know, David, I feel like you might know such things, um, but I feel like that's impossible, but it just, I don't know. Well, it does seem like that these advisory, one, one thing I want to point out is these advisory keys. So if there's a CVE open against a project, you get that information as well. Um, in, in, ca in cases where you actually can tell that the, they match. That's one of the problems, challenges of CVEs is that you can have a CVE but not be able to, to connect what program it relates to. Oh, and, and that, uh, that's important. That is important. Um, it is a, it's a well-known problem with the CVEs. His, I mean, to be fair, historically the CVEs, the assumption was that humans would read them and everyone because there's only a few dozen a year um yeah that that, that failed um and so there are options for recording information for mechanical mapping mm -hmm. but um you know a lot of people don't use them uh some people use something called a cpe identifier but most projects don't have a cpe identifier so uh open ssf has a project called osv which actually does tries to connect between vulnerability reports like CVEs and act specific projects so that you can mechanically map them. Well, what what I what was just very timely and interesting to me is is that uh, Matt and I were actually having a conversation about libraries.io. Yep. Um, recently, and like why people do or don't use it, and uh, he turned me on, and so I did a little bit of 
looking around and he I think you've mentioned this before, uh, David, that's the NVD database. Yeah, National Vulnerability Database, yeah. And so that NVD database also has an API. Yes. They're about uh, to change it. Well, actually, they've already changed it. They're about to deprecate the old one. Okay, yeah. And so it's right. like I was actually playing with this um, yeah. API yesterday, but I, but I don't, I didn't actually open up. Yeah, the, the, the NVD. Of how to hit it. Right. I mean, lots of people look at the NVD and, you know, um, hey, I'm glad it's there. Um, my concern is with the NVD has always been this, you know, you know, please, we need clear mechanical mapping from a vulnerability report to the software that's vulnerable. Uh, every time. If it's not there, I don't care. Please throw it away. Tell me when you're ready to, to be to tell me about a vulnerability. Because something in there is a vulnerability, but I don't know where it is. Uh, doesn't make any sense with uh, you know when when in, in the scale of today's world. So and it's and the sad thing is that they're doing almost all the work except this little piece. It's it's you know, you're so close. And, well, and that's that you know the piece that was missing from libraries.io, which was incredibly cumbersome to get to, was that relationship between the specific package and the directory that that package exists in, in a repository, because many repositories contain multiple different distributed packages, and so what the depths.dev one does is it actually. Um, uh, gives you that. It, it yeah, what, what you really want to do is the other way. Here's a package. Where is its source repository? Because a single source uh, repo can show up in many, many different package repositories. But you should have a one-way link from a given package, given repo, uh, a given package repo repository back to a specific source repository. Yeah, so, how, yeah, that's not in the NVD database is what you're saying. I, I'm sorry, well, okay. Well, it's actually broader than that. Uh, if you get a CVE, what you get is a text description of the program that's vulnerable. Yeah. Now, what you might get is a CPE ID. Now, a CPE ID is unique, and that is a useful identifier in the case where something has a CPE. But CPEs were created back when, well, you know, how many CPEs could there be? There'd be one for Microsoft Office. There'd be one for, you know, I don't know, WordPerfect or whatever is an important program at the time. Okay. But yeah. the assumption was that you were only going to track a few hundred, so maybe a thousand. But just this, this, but what's happened is, is with many things is scale. You know, yeah. as soon as you say, wait a minute, open source software programs can have, and libraries can have vulnerabilities. And there's literally millions of them. Uh, CPE doesn't scale. SWIDs are hashed to a particular version, so they don't work either. Um, yeah. um, I'm a big fan of package IDs for this purpose. Mm -hmm. They're not perfect. They got problems, but they're the closest we've got. Because then they can say things like, in Maven, this specific name has that vulnerability. Ah, now we're talking. Okay. You know, yeah. this, in Maven, this particular package name, this particular version, uh, they are working on version ranges. That's the big weakness of um, package ID right now. But at least they've got a way to uniquely identify a package. A, a compiled package and not just a source repo, but you also yeah. be able to do. Yeah, I so I haven't navigated, so I haven't gone to depths.dev to see if these advisory keys are related to the CPEs or the CPE IDs in any way. And I don't know. So very, very few, you'd have to hunt. I mean, very, very few open source software projects have CPEs. Uh, yeah. OpenSSL does, I know. Um, some big ones do. 
And that's probably not in depths.dev because OpenSS, what's OpenSSL package managed by? Probably a bunch of them. Well, right. I mean, pretty much every system, yeah. uh, you know, you know. so you, you, what you're going to have is Fedora's repos and RHEL's repos and Debian's repos and Ubuntu's repos. So, yeah, so OpenSSL is going to be packaged in a lot of different repositories. It's true for most system software, actually. Okay. Yeah, so they get uh, OpenSSL for N through NPM. No, they're probably going to get... Oh, okay. This is the NPM module OpenSSL, which is not the OpenSSL most people think of. You look at the version number. Yeah. Okay. That, 010 is not the OpenSSL you probably mean. Is it two? Okay. They have all the versions listed as two. Well, no, no. These are, careful. These are the NPM module and OpenSSLs. That's not the OpenSSL most people talk about. Interesting. Okay. That can be confusing. Well, that's why you need something like package ID because what package ID does is uh, package URLs. I'm sorry, I didn't say package IDs, but I meant package URLs. What package URLs are is they're URLs that refer uniquely to a particular package. And so you can distinguish, do you mean the NPM one? Do you mean the Fedora one? What are we talking uh, about? I see. So. So, so, so an SSL that you're familiar with is written in C. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be all by itself in NPM. Right. That's a JavaScript. Now, I would, the odds are excellent that the NPM module called OpenSSL is a shim that then calls the actual OpenSSL. And that matters because it's quite possible for a, say, a JavaScript interface to have a vulnerability and not the underlying program. Yeah, okay. And so you need to be able to distinguish between those cases. Interesting. Ah, so much fun. <laughs> yeah, and the, the vulnerabilities database, um, though it exists and has a base URL, you kind of have to, there doesn't seem to, like you have to know the list of CPEs, you have to know right. some piece of information. Um, right. You have to know what the CPE on is before you can search for it. I mean, that, that stands to reason. Yeah. We sure. do ask for CPE IDs for the, uh, for CPEs, the best practices badge, if they have it, very, very few people fill that in. Okay. So I have, uh, when I just asked for low vulnerabilities and limited my search more, I got I got some descriptions. But I don't even know how I would navigate this to map it, as you said, to projects. So user Espen mail. I just, I don't know. I don't even know how to reference those. Maybe there's a, so there's a cert advisory reference. There's a. Right. So, so I, I, I'm, but there's no thought, reference I, I, to I, where the software lives. <laughs> right, right. Well, but, but the thing is, remember, this was designed originally for all software, proprietary or, or, um, you know, op open source or closed source. So most, closed source folks, they're not going to release their code. So that didn't make, that wouldn't have made any sense to them. They want to know what program that, you know, what is the executable that it has the vulnerability. We, we, okay. we would call a package. A lot of them are downloadable in that sense. Okay. So their solution historically has been CPEs. Um, and the problem is that they have not scaled well. Well, wait, yeah, yeah, this, the, you're, you're, you're not talking about depths.dev. You're talking about the CPEs of. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm def under a different uh, heading. Well, and, and, and you know what? I, I would say it's not that the NVD doesn't scale. Um, okay. Okay. 
you know, I would say, you know, NVD of some use, it, uh, it, re it reports vulnerabilities. Well, uh, no, uh, known vulnerabilities. However, it doesn't have a good way to match, to map, I, I would say a good automated way, uh, automated way to map vulnerabilities to packages or repos or, or source repos. Yeah. Okay. They've, they use CPEs to map, but CPEs are not scaling well. That's the problem there. All right. And what is the, what does that mean that CPEs are not scaling well? Basically you have to, they have to be hand assigned. Yeah. Okay. This is the naming authority for CPEs. I think uh, it used to be somebody else. It, um, but uh, you know, so imagine that. Hey, congratulations. Here's the job. Every time you've got a vulnerability, you need to assign a CPE to whatever it is that's vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, there's several million. Oh, and by the way, you have no money. Interesting. So uh, what I tell people over and over again, um, it's, it's you know, because I used to work with the government, is you have to remember NIST is not a money source. NIST is a money sink. Yeah. Someone has to pay them to do stuff. That's not a, necessarily a bad thing. NIST has some good people, and they've got some good support people. But when you say, hey, NIST should do X, you're probably right, but they're going to immediately turn around and say, great, where's the money? And usually the answer is, well, won't you take that out of hide? And they'll say, I have no hide left. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, what's, what's really interesting about like both of these things, devs.dev to me is, is even though it's not complete or, um, it does cover some very large package managers and gives a lot of useful information. It seems to imply that it will, provide vulnerability information um, in some places, but it's it's not, I haven't looked at it close enough to know if that's clear. Um, this NVD database seems hard to connect directly to a piece of software. And as you mentioned, David, it doesn't sound right. like there's a lot of open source software actually that has CPEs. Um, Sophia, uh, what are, I guess I'll, I'm just curious if to expand the available data in uh, the dev API, might there be some, I guess I might ask someday if the code for creating that database would be open sourced, then it could be expanded beyond its current limitation. Like if, if uh, devs.dev doesn't want to do everything itself, I bet there'd be somebody who'd be willing to. Yeah, we've, we've brought that up with them because yeah. uh, that was the second most interesting thing to bring up from when I talked to folks about it, mostly because it's kind of listed as an open source support tool, but not actually open sourced um, in the sense that it is a closed model. It's not a collaborative model. Um, and so I think that is, it's worth raising again. I've brought it up before. Um, I'm just kind of curious to hear if that's, if that has any place in the roadmap. Yeah, because so. I, I think the thing that they've done that is um, really powerful is um, getting to these, um, I think it's this one. No, it's, I think it's the, this one. Um, geez, I'm, I'm sucking wind at guessing which. Oh, by the way, yeah, I, I, I don't want, I'm, my goal is not to uh, derail anything, but specific to that problem, it's a well-known big problem. Uh, I, many other people actually signed a petition and I just included the petition in the notes here. The, which petition is that? This uh, is a petition to say, hey, CPEs aren't working. Please add pearls to every software 
every CVE that reports a software vulnerability. Uh, CVEs are used for hardware also. So you, you, you know, and we actually talk about what to do in those cases too. But it, it's a signed petition by folks in Linux Foundation and OWASP and lots and lots of other folks. Okay. So they're aware, so they're aware of the problem. You know, I mean, you've got, you know, SPDX and Red uh, and uh, various, you know, Ion Channel and Oracle and, you know, OWASP and Linux Foundation and the Mayo Clinic among the, you know, Gramatech, you know, a whole bunch of people saying, hey, you got to fix this. But uh, they haven't, to my knowledge, they haven't really fixed it yet. They're hoping to change the metadata format to allow easier inclusion, but they're not saying we're going to require the information everybody needs. In which case, it's, I still don't care. Oh, look, a, use, a database that can't be used. It's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, I, I'm frustrated when you're so close, a small process change could really make a difference. Yeah. One thing I'm just noticing is like for a package like NumPy, you have to make sure you're using the right depths.dev directory because it's by package manager, a package manager path in there. Yeah. So that's interesting. And so this. Uh, by, by the way, in general, naming is hard, <laughs> but in particular, identifiers are hard. Okay. So I, I clicked on the PDF link. Is that the, that's not the one that's the um, call to action, is it? This one? Uh, whoops, I just. Um, it's a P, it's a PDF. Of, yeah, that's it. Yes, that's the, that's the, that's the petition. If you look on the bottom, you'll see a whole bunch of names. That's how you can know it's a petition. Oh, okay. Just scroll to the bottom. Yep, I see, I see the petition namers at the bottom. Are they still accepting Signatories? more comments on that or is it kind no. of no fixed? that's done. it's done it is what it it's is okay. yeah i mean you you can i mean you can talk to nist and other folks i mean at any time they're not dead but that particular petition is, you know it was written making specifically it basically the problem is we can't map anything we you got this big vulnerability database that can't be used because it can't be automated and Everybody agrees that naming is hard, uh, and we propose very, you know, yes, we identify the, we make the problem, and we specifically recommend pearls, and we have some suggestions, and for hardware, we suggested GTINs and GMNs. Uh, that probably doesn't matter to you, but basically, you know, instead of noodling on the problem forever and having nothing useful, you know, please take these solutions. They're not perfect, but they're good partial solutions. And it's not clear to me that you're ever going to find a better solution. So take what's take what exists, please. Yeah, it, you know, I don't know how, I had, we had some other things that uh, Sophie and I had talked about talking about here, but I, it doesn't, I mean, it's classic that one part of the government isn't talking to another part of the government, because if we want to secure the software supply chain, darn, this seems like a very useful way to concretely work in that direction. Yeah. That's what we thought too. Well, I'm just kind of curious in terms of like if, if the, the petition is closed, then if there's something, I feel like there are potentially more folks that would agree and either promote and or continue the conversation. Is there any avenue for that? Or is this just sort of, if we know the people that are interested in changing this, we know where to find them kind of thing? I don't. If you can think of another way to cause action, please do it. You don't need my permission. Uh, but this this particular petition, I mean, I'm I, I, co-signer of it. Uh, this particular petition was born out of a frustration that we keep telling the gov U.S. government, specifically the U.S. government, the U.S. government that you're doing a lot of stuff. It's almost useful. If only you would do this one thing, it would be useful. But you won't do the thing that makes it useful. Please, okay. And part of the argument was 
it's really hard. Okay, that's why they created the CPE process to, to identify things. All right, I got that it's hard. This is the best available solution. It's not perfect. Use it anyway. And so you have a whole bunch of people. They know us. We wrote this letter. We signed it. We sent it in. They're aware of it. Nothing's changed. And in the end, only government employees get to make the, the decision of what the government does. So the government has not chosen to act on this currently. I am frustrated. Perhaps you can tell. Yeah, but it's coming through. I, I have thoughts, David, but I, I don't want to voice them on a recorded call. Okay, okay. I mean, yeah, the, 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 the thing is, okay. I'm happy to pause yeah. the recording. I'm happy to pause and this, the recording. Yeah, no, 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 it, it's, it's okay, because I'm starting again. All right, I started recording again. So yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking, we, you know, Sophia and I had discussed actually building a risk metrics model and what it would be, um, what would be the first one. And uh, then the second thing is, are there some things that open SSF? What is, what might it be the right way to collaborate with open SSF to um, enable some of the, the things that they're doing to also be formalized as metrics or work that they do could be referred to and, and constructed within uh, a metric and then somehow connected to the tool set that we're using. So for example- Okay, so, so, so if I can quickly respond because I'm deeply involved in all those things. I mean, I'm at yeah. every, almost every open SSF meeting. I'm certainly at every dashboard meeting, almost every scorecards meeting. I lead the best practice badge. So I'm, I- uh, Yeah, I know you're super involved. I, I'm, I'm all involved <laughs> in this stuff and I'm here too. So, uh, yeah. I, so I have opinions about this and that doesn't mean you have to agree with me, but uh, let, let me try at least how at least I've been operating. Um, the um, obviously the scorecard has tried to identify some very simple simple uh, heuristics. They scale from zero to ten and measure that. Okay, mm -hmm. the dashboard is a broader effort to take metrics of different kinds and present them to users to help them figure out what's the risk level. Things like hey, do you, do you have recent contributions? That's a hard thing to scale from zero to 10. But if your broader question isn't just, hey, I wanna look at this, this project real quick, but I'm trying to make a decision about whether or not I should use it. Uh, the the long-term goal is that dashboard will be the, uh, the point where that data is tucked in, where it brings in scorecards and best practices badge and lots of other data to help people make decisions, okay? Now, how does that relate to this group and chaos in general, okay? Uh, my view is that chaos in general, especially this risk working group, is basically does deep dives to help identify some potentially useful metrics, mm -hmm. okay? You, you, we, you drill in, try to figure out exactly how to measure it. Where are the problems with measurements? How can we try to counter some of those problems? No matter what you do, any metric can be gained. Um, and there's always the risk of, in particular, if you only have one metric, of, of, of driving the project to the metric instead of what's actually important. But you can make better and worse metrics. And so the goal, at least the hope is chaos, this group in particular, helps make better metrics. The dashboard app folks are going to grab whatever metrics they can find. Uh, Absolutely, I've told them, I, I've pointed to them at chaos a number of times. I believe they are planning to reuse some chaos metrics. Um, uh, I don't, right now they aren't using some of the tools like Augur and so on, but I think they are thinking about it. Uh, right now they're just trying to come up with some basic evolutionary prototype that they can use. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what they're planning to do is we're going to just, we're going to, Define a whole bunch of metrics, implement it, try it out, repeat, repeat many times. Is it, I feel like you've showed us an early version of that word. Yes. Before. Yes, I have. Um, so they, the, basically, there the the dashboard. There's a dashboard project, I guess, uh, where basically they're taking that as their first step, and they're uh, the plan is they're going to start for various reasons. They want to start over. Okay. And so they're re-implementing a whole new uh, dashboard. 
but they're going to use the current prototype as you know, basically the first version they had was kind of a throwaway prototype. Okay, we learned some stuff. Now let's make an evolutionary prototype and so on. Yeah, if you go to metrics.opensf.org. Hopefully it's still up. Org. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. They, they, I think their uh, their uh, certificate expired. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And accept the risk. I'm trying to. Sometimes my browser doesn't let me do. Doesn't let you do that. Okay. That are insecure. It is spinning. Uh oh. I think, it's, I think it's allowing me to go, but the little X is not moving. Yeah, I think that there he is. There might be a sometimes uh, at the it's server level they block HTTP requests or, uh, or in the, so it could even be their server. Oh, there we go. There we go. No. Um, yeah, I think I think it it goes. It, it I think it shuts down after being up for a while. In fact, it says HTTPS. Interesting. No, it's just an old cert. That's the problem. Yeah, we need to turn. Well, yeah, the problem is we're not really being serious about updating this because it's about to go away. Yeah, so this version was basically a, a Grafana instance. All the work's actually being done by yeah. Grafana. Okay. So, you know, basically it's showing some metrics, and then the goal is to make it easier. And the, the, the fundamental problem that feedback we got from this was that it was kind of hard to figure out, and, you know, what's good with, you know, I mean, the green is good and red is bad, but uh, okay. Yeah, I remember. Seeing basically, they're gonna you know, so they're they're trying to redo it in a cleaner, nicer way, and then go from there. Yeah, yeah. We have we certainly have the our the chaos tooling has most of that available as well. So there's a way to collaborate there. We are out of time, and I have to teach a class in nine eight eight nine and a half minutes. So okay. Um, Take care. Uh, I think I think next time hopefully we can all still be here and we can work on a metric model together and um if if there's when is the dashboard meeting for open ssf uh, okay so hold up here um let's see here today is the 13th uh the next one is the 21st at uh noon eastern time it's okay okay it's called SIG Risk or Stream 2. So noon Friday, uh, next Friday. Eastern time. Okay. Okay? All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and you guys are you you're welcome there. All right. Thank you. Take care. Yep. And congrats on Jeff's Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, it's not me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>